Hey, man, how are you today? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, when did you first notice in practice how good Arnold Abiquetti could be, and and what did he do that sort of jumped out to you? Well, you know, um, you know, obviously, you know, when you watch this guy's tape from last year, um, you know, against uh, at, at Temple against recording some of the in progress uh, against some of the uh, competition, he was uh, you know dominant, and then you know getting having the chance to work with him. Uh, in spring practice, I remember for me, my eyes were open the first time I saw him uh, work through the bags, and I saw how quick he could uh, carry, you know, pick up, pick his feet up, and get moved through the bags, and his acceleration and bend uh, coming out of the bags. I was that was impressive. And then I recall the first time he, you know, he went one on ones against our guys in full pads, and you saw him get off the ball and how much ground. Uh, that he made up quickly and was able to bend and lean. It was impressive. So, I mean, it, it doesn't take very long uh, to see that guy's athleticism uh, and to see his explosiveness. So, you know, we we had an ideal early on that this guy, hey, this guy's pretty explosive because he had shown flashes of that, you know, on tape uh, last season. And then, you know, working with him through the bags, doing athletic uh, agility stuff. Uh, in, in spring practice, you knew this guy had some juice to him. Let's go to Greg Pickle with Blue White Illustrated. <laughs> hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing? I'm Good, doing man. great. How you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Hey, sticking with the defensive ends, another guy that – um, played well, I think, or at least it seemed to on Saturday, was Nick Tarburton, who had to overcome quite a bit to get on the field um, prior to you getting here, and then also, you know, obviously 2020. So what kind of growth have you seen from him, and just how impressive has his career arc been to get to this point of being a starter, recovering a fumble at Wisconsin, and really making an impact on that game? You know, um, Nick, Nick has, ever since I've been here, you know, Nick's been that type of glue guy that you got to have in your program, you know. Um, my, you know, my hat's off to Andy Muttenham and his staff and the White Galt and his staff on getting Nick um, healthy and getting him strong where he's feeling good. And, you know, um, Nick, if you if you watched him any in spring practice and then, you know, throughout fall camp, you just you kind of anticipated the guy that was going to be who he is for us this year, uh, how physical he was. Um, he was in the right spots. And, you know, you're not you're not going to find a harder worker on this football team than Nick Tarburton. I mean, Nick Nick's right up there with PJ and all those guys on how hard he works and he prepares the right way. And he's a technician at his craft. So, you know, um, it's been it's been incredible to watch him um, bounce back from, you know, uh, the, the injuries and things that he had earlier. And like I said, hats off to uh, Andy Muttenham and uh, Dwight called on getting him back. And it's been, he's been, he's been fun to coach. Um, you know, he does, he does everything as you ask. He really, really works at it. Um, he provides leadership, um, you know, on our football team with how he practices and, and conducts business. And like you said, I mean, think about it. He had some big plays in the game with the fumble recovery and, you know, he almost had an interception as well. And, just, you know, the, the motor plays that he makes, you know, uh, tackling guys and stuff like that. I mean, he's, he's had a, a great impact, but it's been incredible and um, great to see him bounce back. Let's go to Audrey Snyder with The Athletic and Rich Garcella, you're on deck. Hey, John, thanks for your time today. Hey, Audrey, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about a guy we haven't seen yet, uh, Hakeem Beeman, uh, listed at 256. I mean, is the plan for him to still be inside, outside? Um, and what else can you kind of tell us about some of those younger D-tackles that we haven't seen a ton of so far? Well, you know, um, the, th the thing with Hakeem right now, and I think as Coach Franklin said, he's he's unavailable right now. So I'll talk to um, – I'll talk more about um, some of the younger guys like – uh, Kazai Izard uh, is a young guy that, um, you know, that it continues to get better and better. Um, he is, he is, uh, um, he's growing and uh, in our system. And um, I think he'll, I think he, he has the opportunity to be a great, great player for us. Uh, we like how he's progressing. Um, 
for Toma Mold was another young guy uh, that, that we see um, that's progressing and uh, becoming more and more comfortable in our defense. You know, he's probably one of the strongest guys in our group. And, uh, you know, like we do, Audrey, this is a long season. We're going to need all those guys to continue to, to grow and develop. But because at some point, uh, you know, during the season, you're going to have to count on those guys for heavy minutes or a bigger role because that's just the nature of playing in the Big Ten and playing power five football. You know, another young guy that's uh, that's starting to, to come along for us um, as well as a mean uh, Vanover. Uh, who continues to get better and, and practice and continue to learn the system. Um, Zariah Fisher uh, is another young guy that we're excited about, um, that, that they continue to grow and continue to uh, continue to develop the way we need them to, you know. Um, I think you guys saw more of Devon Elise this last game. Uh, you can you can see some of the growth and development that he's had uh, in the system as well. So we got some good young guys. And we're going to continue to bring them along because their, their number's going to get called this year and they're going to be counted on to uh, help us and play um, big time minutes for us and be very valuable for us. You know, same thing. It's kind of like uh, you watch Smith Bilbert, too, is another young guy that's coming along. And you see you continue to see him develop and grow and, and, and continue to get better. We're, we're excited about that, that, was, that group of young defensive linemen, man. Those guys are coming on. Go to Rich Garcello with the Reading Eagle and Corey Geiger. You're on deck. Good morning, John. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, man? I'm all right. Thank you. John, Jesse Lucetta, how, how would you assess his play Saturday at end? How much work did he get at end in camp? And how hard is it to juggle those two positions? Well, you, you know, uh, you know, I, I would say this about about Jesse, man. He is a heck of a football player. Um, I think Jesse is extremely, extremely intelligent um, to be able to to do what he did on Saturday. You know, to to play defensive end. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize the technical uh, that the technical uh, deals that goes with that position with eyes and footwork, and then be able to, to flip a switch and go back and play Mike linebacker where you got, where you, your eyes are, are different, your techniques are different, and then you're doing different things within each of the plays at those different positions, man. You got to be, a, you got to be, a, number one, a super talented football player, but number two, extremely smart. And um, I think you guys saw Jesse Lucetta play the game Saturday at both positions on a high level. So uh, I'm super impressed with him. And, you know, I, I've coached in the NFL, and I don't know, I haven't seen many guys in the NFL be able to flip a switch like that. And so it's extremely impressive. Um, you know, Jesse has put the work in. You know, he played, uh, he practiced for us at that position in fall camp uh, at DN and, uh, you know, at linebacker. So he's got work doing it. So when it happened on Saturday, it was no, he was ready to go. And, uh, you know, but it, to me, it's been super, super impressive. Uh, watching that young man be able to do that. That's that's special. You don't see that often. Let's go to Corey Geiger with DK Pittsburgh Sports. And Donnie, you're on deck. Hey, good morning, John. Penn State, good morning. Has, all, uh, Penn State has always been able to rotate a lot of guys in on the line, keep everybody fresh. What's your confidence level of, of being able to do that right now and, and not have much drop off? and how long you know, might it end up taking as the season goes on to be fully confident in bringing a lot of guys in and out? Okay, I think I got the gist of that. It kind of like went in and out. So if, I, if I'm not answering a specific part of the question, just hit me again because you kind of went in and out. I think I know what you're asking. But, um, you know, it, you know, Pitt State has always rolled guys. They've been always blessed here with a, a plethora of defensive linemen. And, you know, one of the things I, I do like to roll guys uh, and, and, you know, I think as we continue to go on and um, on through the season, I think you'll see more guys continue to roll more and more, uh, you know, and that's kind of how it is a little bit when you got a younger group of, of defensive linemen behind them. Um, you got to continue to, to to make sure they're ready. And, 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 and um, you know, we talk in our, in our room and on this team about, you know, earning the coach's trust by showing it in practice 
uh, when you have your opportunity to game short and in the game. And those guys are earning our trust, uh, which allows us to, to roll and feel comfortable playing more guys uh, at key moments in the game. So we'll con we will continue to build that. And these guys are out here working their tails off. So I think I think we'll I think as you guys as we go along, you'll see a whole plethora of guys rolling in and out because we want to have that ability. And I think with today's college football, you have to be able to roll enough guys and keep guys fresh. Did did that answer your question? That's me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Donnie Collins and Mark Brennan. You're on deck. Morning, John. Good morning. How are you? Um, how much better can Arnold get? How, how, is, is this just the tip of the iceberg for him? And, and in what ways do you think he could really improve as the season progresses? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, I think obviously, you know, Arnold can get better. You know, we all we all can get better. I think I think what you, you guys saw on Saturday was how explosive and you saw his athleticism. But, you know, there's always things that we can work on. You know, there's things that we could be better at with our technique or we could be a little bit better with our eyes. And I think as, as he continues to get comfortable with what we're doing on defense and, um, you know, that your, your technique, you get really comfortable with your technique and you have that athleticism, then I think you, you can really see this guy just, you know, continue to skyrocket the way he is. But he is doing a really, really good job, man. He's doing a really good job. He's a good learner. He's a, he studies the game. Um, you know, he goes out and practices the right way. Um, you know, AK doesn't say a whole lot. Uh, he's he's all he comes in the building with a big smile. But when he steps out on that grass to practice, man, it's it's competitive. It's one hundred percent. So as he continues to work through the little new, uh, the little uh, the little details of, of of the schemes and stuff, I think you'll continue to see him get better and better. Go to Mark Brennan with 247 and Elton Hayes, you're on deck. Hey, John, thanks for your time today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, what, what did you think about PJ's play on Saturday? Uh, how many snaps did he play? And um, it looked like he made a pretty athletic uh, move there on Brisker's pick. To be able to do that that late in the game, what does that kind <laughs> of say about him? Thanks. You, you know what? Um, I, I was very impressed with PJ's play. Um, I thought that he did a really good job just play in and play out of uh, consistently striking his man on key, consistently being disruptive, whether it was knocking his uh, man on key back in the backfield or getting off a block or just his extra effort. I thought, it, I thought it just, it defined, I felt like how we were playing that game on Saturday, the way he played. And it was from the opening pop to the last pop that he was in the game. I remember the last drive, <laughs> Uh, I think they had been in like four plays. And I said, hey, man, do you, do, do you need a blow? You want to come out? And he looked at me and said, heck no, coach. I'm good. And so I, I think, number one, you know, um, Coach Franklin's done a great job. Just the program that those guys had and Coach Galt with getting them in great condition right there. I mean, those guys were – I didn't see any – I didn't see any drop-off with P.J. from the first snap to – I don't know how many snaps we had in the game. I think 90-something. 90, 90 we still were striking the same way. So that has a lot, says a lot about our strength and condition and the nutrition program um, on, on getting those guys right. But I thought I thought he was a dominant player. And, um, you know, if you were to see how hard P.J. has worked this summer with, with just putting in those extra hours, just working on the finer details of his craft, it all manifested itself, I felt like, on Saturday, you could see those things he was working with. Let's go to Ellen Hayes with CNHI and Tyler, you're on deck. Hey, John, how are you doing this morning? How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well, thank you. Hey, um, I realized that you're in your second year here, coach, and um, Saturday is going to be your first time at Beaver Stadium with like full crowds, the full Beaver uh, Stadium, Penn State experience, besides an obvious win. Um, what are some things that uh, you know you're looking forward and you're expecting? <laughs> well, you know it's crazy. It's crazy that we're actually saying that, but you're right. So I'm I'm like I'm like the rookies. I have no idea how it's how it works out or 
getting off the bus and walking through the tunnel and all that kind of stuff. But I have no idea. So uh, I, I'm excited. You know, when I when I took this job, that's all people uh, talked about was, man, you're gonna you're gonna feel the game day environment here. You're gonna feel the crowd. You know, um, you're gonna feel State College. Uh, you know, from Thursday on, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. And so, obviously, you know, to me, that's a part of uh, that's a part of the game. You know, um, we we say all the time that I, you know, I'll never take for granted having fans and having the community at the game because it, it, it's such a big part of the game. And you know, last year when we played uh, through what we did, that part of the game was missed. So I'm I'm excited to embrace all of that. Uh, I think it's Nittanyville and all that kind of stuff going on. That's awesome just having the communities and everybody locked in. But, you know, again, this will be my first time going through it too. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, I know our players are looking forward to it. They're appreciative of having the fans back in the stands and, you know, riding the, riding the blue buses over to the stadium and getting ready to go and compete in front of a, a packed house. So I, I, I'm looking for, I'm excited. I'm excited about this opportunity for our guys and, you know, newbies like myself, um, I'm excited to experience that. We got time for a few more. We'll go to Tyler Donahue uh, with Lions Two Four Seven, and Dave, you're on deck. Hi, John. Great to hear from you this morning. How you doing this morning, man? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I could circle back to Jess Luketta, can you kind of go back to those earliest conversations during the off season when it got serious that the staff was going to use him in this way and he was going to embrace that? What were the challenges? What were the natural fits? And why did it make sense for all parties involved? Well, I mean, you know, um, Coach Pry um, and, and those guys that, you know, kind of talked with Jesse earlier just to see where he was at. We had a conversation. And, uh, you know, we're all always about getting getting your best players on the field. And, um, you know, he would – Jesse would always come down and, and, and work with um, – Work, work, work with myself, Coach Barnes, and get pass rush. And, you know, we, we noticed that this guy could really rush off the edge and he was quick. And, you know, he, he looked he looked a lot like the DNs that were here that we had. And, you know, he was all for whatever helped the team. And so when you get a guy with that kind of attitude that's, that's, that's open to do whatever is good for the team and he has the skill set to play both positions, to me, it was a no-brainer. So... He jumped all the way in and uh, learned the position and learned um, lear learned how we do th things at DN. While meanwhile, while working hard at, at, at linebacker as well. So I mean, he's just he just brings all that value. And if you know Jesse Lucetta, he's one of the most competitive people. You know, I, I spoke earlier about how intelligent the young guy and young man he is. I mean, it just it just all worked well. You know, we've been very fortunate. Uh, that 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 worked out, but man, we were super excited uh, about what he can, what he does and what he brings to the table. And you know, when you got guys like Jesse and and, and Brisker and PJ and and, and Castro Fields and guys like that, Ellis Brooks leading your defense that are your hardest workers um, that, and, and that are intelligent players like they are, man, it just trickles downhill. So, you know, um, Jesse was all in. He jumped all in. You know, he, he's just it's so so unselfish, and um, I couldn't I couldn't be more impressed uh, with his attitude and how hard he works at it. Very proud of that was very proud of him, and he can do some 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 special things for us this year. And we'll close things up with Dave Eckert, uh, Blue White Illustrated. Hey John, how you doing? You're great. How are you? Doing good, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask you about your other transfer there on the, uh, the defensive line, Derek Tangelo. Um, just curious what you thought of his game on Saturday and, and what his next steps are. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I thought Congo did. Uh, came in and, and, and did a nice job for us. You know, really solid in the run game, and uh, he just brings another. Again, he's another calming force. A guy that's played a lot of football. Um, you know, he's been, been through the, been through the fire down in the ACC and he just brings a calmness. He's a very business like approach. Um, he works hard at it and, uh, man, it's been, it's been great having him because he, he provides good leadership as well. And he, he's a very, he had, a, I thought he had a very, very solid game, uh, his first game, uh, in a Penn state uniform and, 
again, as he continues to, to get more and more comfortable um, with what we're doing on defense, I, I could see him just continuing to, to keep trending upwards. But, you know, overall, it was, it, was a, uh, it was a good first game for him. All right, appreciate you, Coach Scott, and 